Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to my van. And I got this thing for almost free because it was kind of vandalized and some stuff was stolen off of it. And one thing that got stolen is the center console, which uh, gives you all the cup holders and a little bit of storage space. And I've actually been driving this van around a little bit. And when I go to get coffee, I have no cup holders and it's like the worst thing ever because I'm just sitting there driving with my coffee in one hand. I looked online and there's pretty much none of these uh, center consoles for the earlier vans. Uh, this has like a slide-in style versus like the newer ones which have all these like little button looking things and it kind of mates up with it and then slides in. It's a lot different design. I did find one in the junkyard but it was really beat up and it was a tan color. Uh, and if I found one online it would probably be like two or three hundred bucks. So what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and make my own and I think I can make it really cool and a lot better than the original. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. The first thing I need to do is make a base plate that's perfectly sized that will slide into these channels and give me something to build off of. I went ahead and measured these and it's about a quarter inch. As you can tell it kind of uh, tapers slightly at the bottom. So I'm going to try cutting board material. Uh, it seems to be pretty strong and it isn't gonna like crack or anything so uh, I'm not sure if this is the best way to go because I was thinking about doing wood but I don't know of a lot of wood that's that strong when it's this thin let's just test fit it make sure the thickness is right and it gets a little tight at the bottom but look at that it pretty much goes all the way in and we could always sand it down a little bit but you kind of would want a little bit of a tight fit so what I did at first is take some cardboard strips and just kind of cut a little angle at each side, um, just little by little until I got it to fit in with no movement side to side. Um, and I did one for the bottom and then one for the top as well. And that helped me get the perfect angle and length at the same time. From there I did some measuring and I cut out a piece of cardboard and it sort of fits in there. And I did it longer on one side because this comes up higher than the other one and then it kind of just angles down to a shorter end. But uh, this was pretty close however um, I was off a little bit on the upper end. And I finally made the perfect template. I mean, it literally fits in there perfectly. So next, I'll use this and I'll trace it out on the cutting board material. Make sure to clamp it down as you trace it and then cut it all out. I did some sanding on the edges just to give it a smooth feel and I also uh, smoothed down the bottom parts where it slides into uh, because it's tapered a little bit and I kind of just went back and forth just did a little sanding until it like fit perfectly and now it should fit in there nicely touches the bottom and it's nice and snug one thing I will point out is that uh, when it was cold it fit in here perfectly and then once the weather warmed up it was a little too tight and I guess that's just from things expanding and contracting However, that's good enough for now. I can always sand a little bit more on each side if I need to later on. Next, I'm gonna take some cardboard and tape and pretty much build a box in here. And I gotta figure out how far I want it to come out because I would still like to kind of get my leg through here. And here it is, guys. Nice little center console model. And I can get my leg in and out as long as I put the seat all the way back. But yeah, that'll just uh, hold it on. And I'm also gonna put a little lock on the bottom eventually that locks into that thing. And when I build it, I'm really gonna have to try to make it as level as possible. The van is sitting a little bit like that, so I can't really go off of a level, but I'll probably just have to kind of eyeball it according to this. But then we got a lot of room in here to store some stuff. And of course, the actual wood is probably about three quarters, so it's gonna take up a little bit more room and I got some cool hinges that are gonna open and close that and also I got a MagSafe charger 
that folds down and I'm going to attach this to the lid and have it so you can adjust it back and forth. When you need to open the lid, it closes flat and you can still open the lid. Charger plugs in from the back so you'll have to manually plug it in and unplug it. But at least it's a, you know, a place to just throw your phone. So one more thing, there is a cup holder right here and I may make it a little bit taller just so uh, the cup can hit the bottom a little easier. However, with the extra width of the board, um, it might not be an issue. Also, I was kind of considering trying to match these angles that come up to the side, but it would just got a little too complex for me because I'm a little bit newer to carpentry. So I'm just gonna do it straight up and down and it doesn't look that bad. But anyways, let's build the real thing. Okay, so I just took a piece of cardboard and I wanna get the width of the bottom board. That looks pretty much perfect. It gets slightly more narrow at the end, but I'm just gonna keep it one width. And I just matched it up on my table saw. Now I'm gonna cut out a piece of half inch MDF. Don't forget to wear some uh, lung protection so you're not breathing in the sawdust. And now we can cut right there, but I'm gonna take about an inch off because I want it to be a little bit smaller. And also I'm gonna be putting paneling on the front that overlaps everything. That looks good. However, it is a little wobbly because uh, this thing has popped up a little bit. So let's go ahead and mark where that is. I just cut out a cardboard square to fit that. And we'll go ahead and trace it. Now I got a trim router with just a cutting bit. Just poking out a little bit. You can just uh, mill that out. That's pretty good. Perfect. I just got that held on by a piece of masking tape. I'll throw this board up here. And it's kind of cool. It kind of shares the same angle. So I don't have to do anything with the angle down here. It looks pretty flat. I just marked it about where I want it. Better to have a little extra than not enough because you can always readjust it. So I want the lid to be flat like this is. And to figure out that angle, I just put a piece of cardboard right here and I used this little digital angle thingy. I don't even know what it's called. I just know how to use it. And I measured that angle. 90 minus about 82 is about eight degrees difference. Got the table saw blade angle at eight degrees. And I got the guide adjusted to hit that mark right there. Also, since I want the front blue pine that I'm putting on here to be straight up and down, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little bit more off of this and do an eight degree angle. Now that we got that angle cut, I went ahead and installed the sliding bracket. Make sure the angled part is in the right position. Now we can go ahead and line this up here. And now we can make a mark. I got it set up on some clamps exactly along that line. I got some smaller drywall screws and they're gonna go through right like that. I got my drill bit set up so it's about the same length. I got marks for three screws. Two are covered by the clamps, but I'll just start with the one in the middle. As you can see, there's no cracking. Just what we want. The reason why I did the center one first is so I can still move it back and forth to make sure it's the same on each side. I got another clamp on it. All right, I got it taken back apart and I got some countersunk bits. And I'm just gonna mill each one out a little bit. I just want it to sit flush. Screws are ready to go. So I'm just gonna throw some of this uh, water resistant interior exterior wood glue. It's a nice little strip. I'm all done. I did have to sand the screws just a little bit because they're 
poking up slightly, but now they're flush. For the side, I just use this tongue and groove blue pine board. Absolutely beautiful. And this is what I ended up with. It's one side and there's the other. Originally, I had this angled down here to just uh, slope straight up, but I kind of made a mistake and this was sticking out a little further than this. So I tried to trim it up and I gave it the wrong angle. So that was a problem. But what I did is just uh, went ahead and just cut it straight. And then I cut half of this straight. And then in the middle, I did eight degrees and that'll take care of the angle we need to accomplish. The top of this is gonna be flat when there's a lid on it because we made this an eight degree angle. The top of this is an eight degree angle as well. And just slopes up a little bit and i wanted this to be straight up and down in the van right here because we're going to put cup holders since we're using the tongue and groove pine we can make the tongue and groove part just right here in the middle because it'll give us a little bit of flex and i just uh copied it on the other side second one was much much easier be flat right there however this one the backboard comes up a little higher but if you put it over here it matches that one so I think this just kind of slopes up slightly and we can just sand that down. Got the sides all on. It's just uh, that part right there that needs to be sanded down. This one looks pretty good. I like that knot right there. Definitely gives it a bit of character. I just put a screw in there, there, and then one on the bottom. I just went ahead and cut out the front boards and I left the tongue and groove parts in the middle so they link up with each other and then cut them to size on the bottom and the top. This one's got a big old knot right there. Kind of just worked out like that. So I also went ahead and marked where I want to put the screws. I'm just going to put two on each side of each board. All right, I got the lid on here and I'm pretty much going to utilize this tongue part as like a handle to pull it open and closed a little bit easier and gives us just enough room to cut off this grooved part because we won't need that and i got it all marked here underneath with the pencil and i'm just gonna hack off this end with the tag it's kind of rough all right there it is however it is a little wobbly. You can tell this has popped up and this has popped up a little bit. So we just need to sand it down so it's nice and smooth. I'm just gonna use my trim router to round out these edges. Also do a lot of sanding on this thing. Make it really smooth. So I cut two sides of the tongue part and then I kind of just finished them off with the sander right here, like that. That way it won't get in the way of the drink holders, yet you can use this as a handle to open and close the lid. Pretty much finished. Took a lot of time sanding this. I just started with uh, like 60 grit just to size it all up. And then I went to an orbital sander at 230, because that's all I have. I would go a little higher, but that got it pretty good. Then I just used some 400 with a little sanding block just to give it a final finish. Yeah. I wanted to make sure I had nice smooth corners and edges, so I'm not like smacking my knee on it all the time. It looks pretty darn good. Even these knots are nice and smooth. The little tongue part worked out perfectly. And I got some special hinges that we're gonna use later. But anyways, I'm happy with that. So now it's time to finish it. I got the front panels off and everything is uh, on a little box or block to keep it up a little bit so I can get around the sides. And I'm gonna be using this bare spar urethane. It's just water-based semi-gloss. It's for exterior and interior wood surfaces, which 
It also has UV inhibitors and it'll be a crystal clear protective finish. It should be perfect for the van. It also expands and contracts with temperature change. I also wiped it off with a damp rag and let it dry overnight. And then I used some tack cloth on all of it. So I'm gonna follow the instructions and apply one coat. And then you wait about an hour so it dries to the touch and then lightly sand it with a 400 grit sandpaper and then wipe it off with the tack cloth. And then I'll do another two or three more coats of that. So it's been about three days since I put on the urethane coating and it looks pretty good. It should be fully cured by now. Next, I'm gonna install the lid and I got some special hinges just for this. And also before I install those, Alaskan Tactical gave me a cool magnetic handgun mount. I'm gonna be using this for my concealed carry firearm, which is a Beretta Nano, and I've already cleared it, make sure it's safe. And this will be nice to have. Uh, it won't take up much room when I don't have my firearm in here, and I won't keep it in here a lot, just like if I'm at work or if I'm going in somewhere where I can't conceal carry. And it's definitely got a lot of magnetic strength, definitely not coming off of there. But pretty much I just gotta figure out exactly where to put it. Um, and we can use the hinges and make sure it's all going to line up properly. It's pretty good. He's got enough room with that hinge right there. So I'm just going to use these uh, smaller silver screws. That's probably good right about there. I want a little bit of room from the bottom. You'll see why in just a little bit. And you also want to make sure that the screws are not going to cross with the front panel. And I got it at a little bit of an angle so it'll match this angle right here. I got the drill bit marked with a sharpie so we don't drill all the way through. So that would be horrible. Vacuum out the sawdust. Now screw it down. And now we have quick, easy access for the firearm. All right, now it's time to install the hinges. I'm just gonna use this box for even spacing. Put that right there, right there. And then I'm gonna use a small square, line that up so it's straight, and then bring in this big square. And I want it exactly flush with the top. And then I will mark the center of each one of these holes. Try to get it right dead center if you can. And as you can tell, the angle of this hinge is pointing into the box slightly, about probably eight degrees. And that'll be fine because it'll actually hold the top down with tension. The hinges came with the perfect size screws. Next, I got the lid clamped on exactly where I want it. And I will just use the top plate to help line it up. Next, I'll move the hinges up until they stop into the lid and just mark the upper screw holes. I'm gonna get right in the center. I can't really access the bottom ones until it's open. Then I'll drill those marks out. You can just screw in those top screws. Now the bottom ones are lined up so we can drill through those. Check that out. Perfect. Just barely fits. I absolutely love how these hinges work. So cool. We're going to want to install the backing plate. And we want to be sure that we install it in the exact right place. I'll use an alcohol prep pad and just clean up the plastic. We probably don't have to do the back of the box because it has a fresh coat of polyurethane. And then I just stuck on some 3M double-sided adhesive uh, foam tape. It's just the really thin stuff. And I just put one on each side and then one in the middle. Made sure those are on there really good and that it's all the way down. Now we can peel off the backing. And then very carefully line it up. Make sure it's uh, touching the bottom of the engine cover and push it into place. And hopefully we can just lift it up. 
and the backing should be in the exact right spot. Next, I'm just gonna use these uh, short countersunk screws. Yeah, these look like they should fit. Measure it up with the right drill bits. We could probably mark the drill bit with a Sharpie so we don't drill too deep and poke through the other side. And then I'm just gonna drill two right here, and two right here in between all those tapes. And now we can pull it off. We'll go ahead and remove the tape. Then we'll just line the holes up and install four of these screws. And I really like this cutting board because it doesn't crack when you drill into it. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and test fit it. Make sure it's good. Look at that, that is perfect. Let's go ahead and add two more of those screws right in the middle. This uh, cutting board material does flex quite a bit, so we want to secure it as close to the end as possible. So I'm just gonna use these longer countersunk wood screws. And there we go. Now that we got those extra screws and they're popped out just a little bit, it's like a perfect fit. I also used this toolbox liner material and I cut out a perfect bottom for this. Now we just need to install the front panels. Unfortunately, it did crack slightly, so be careful how tight you make it. But that was the only spot. Next, we just need to install these fold-out cup holders. We got a full can. Not going anywhere. And I'll just uh, make some little marks in between where it needs to go. All right, now it's on. You can see the whole thing does wiggle just slightly, which is a little bit annoying, but if you lock it in, it doesn't wiggle at all. So we'll see if this holds up. It might pull out of there from the vibration, but I could always rig something up or even put a uh, bigger metal bracket on there as well. It's definitely a lot more sturdy with that lock on the bottom. I'll have to fix these too, cause they rattle. But what I'm gonna do next is install a MagSafe charger. And this thing is pretty cool cause it opens up and it's adjustable and it closes flat. And if we put it right about there, we're still able to open it, just barely. Guys, to keep those uh, screws on the back from scratching it all up, I went ahead and put some hot glue on there and it didn't actually fit. So I had to uh, kind of slice off the top, but they're still covered and check it out. It's even more snug fit. And before I even lock the bottom, it doesn't even move like it did. Ah, it's perfect. Going into this, I didn't really know what to expect and I didn't even think it would really work out too well. And I actually don't have a whole lot of uh, carpentry experience, but I did learn a whole lot from this build. 
and I had a lot of fun doing it. I really like that I can just take it on and off, like within seconds pretty much and that'll be really helpful when i need to work on the engine and i have to get the cover off because it would be a huge pain if this thing was like bolted on or something like that because the engine cover barely has enough room to sneak it through here as it is without taking the seats out and using that hot glue on the screws made it incredibly sturdy even without the lock on here and it's something so simple that makes a huge difference and also it won't scratch it up as much when you're moving it in and out the magsafe phone charger and holder is probably the coolest part of the center console and i'm surprised like this actually worked out like it did but it's kind of cool you when you get in the car you just have a place to like throw your phone so it doesn't just fall off going around corners and stuff and unfortunately you have to plug it in on the back to actually be able to use the charging parts but it's not that bad. And there's a bunch of space back here to put some cables. It's pretty cool, the rubber feet uh, keep it in place and also keep it from scratching up the lid of this thing. And you can just adjust the phone into any position you want. And you could even put it in landscape mode, which is definitely handy. And I've already used it, it just stays exactly where you put it. I'm definitely going to put another one for the passenger as well a little bit later on. Maybe I should go ahead and get it because it was only like 20 bucks. And of course, it is so nice to have cup holders in this van. Finally, I did use some of that toolbox or tool drawer liner and just cut it out to fit on the bottom of these cup holders and just hot glued it in place. And not only does that kind of keep the bottom of the drink from sliding around, it also uh, keeps it from rattling because I was getting a rattle noise from these but that was super easy to do and of course the original cup holder is still usable which just it's just like everything worked out perfectly I do have a little carbon monoxide detector that I might mount in between the cup holders we'll have to see one thing I did uh, kind of mess up a little bit is I think the angle is a bit off compared to these compartments right here um, but what I did to fix that is just put uh, some foam tape right here and the angle's pretty much perfect now and it also kind of cushions it when you close it because it does kind of want to close hard with these hinges. The MagSafe charger does overlap the lid a little bit but it's got just enough clearance to be able to open it up which is really good. The magnetic handgun mount works just great. You have enough room to get it in and out if you need to. And there is quite a lot of space in this thing because I'm doing a camper conversion. I want to be able to store as much stuff as possible in every little nook and cranny. I did hot glue that tool mat on the bottom of this. So when you're pulling it in and out, it's not flopping around inside there. And another thing to keep in mind is the hinges do take up a little bit of room when it's closed. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, you could probably get a little bit more space if you put the hinges all the way to each side. So I am a bit shorter and I have the seat a bit further up when I'm driving. However, if you put the seat back, you got plenty of room to get your leg in and out of here, which is pretty nice. I think the original ones like really take up quite a bit more room, but for a camper conversion, I wanna be able to get in and out of the driver's seat and go to the back when I need to without much trouble. So this is like just the right size for that. But anyways, guys, I hope you found this video useful. And even if you don't have this same exact vehicle or something's different, maybe it'll inspire you to make something like this for yourself. I am going to add a light in here that turns on when you open it up with a little micro switch. I think that'll be pretty cool. And I'm also gonna have ambient lighting um, on the bottom of this that kind of like shines back. But I'm gonna do that in a different video because this one's getting way too long. But anyways, thanks for watching guys and I will catch you next time. Peace out.